Hi guys, this is Max, and today we're going to give a scientific reasoning behind the deep tissue massage. And to start, we're going to consider the superficial back line from Thomas Myers and Anatomy Train's book, that is a really great book to improve your work, and the functional line on the back, and some line on the lateral line, especially when we work on the glute. So right now I'm warming up the tissue of my client and all the muscle of the back. When I consider the muscle of the back, I consider the latissimus dorsis and, of course, the traps. But I even think further. And I think about the, the back extensor and the deep muscle like the iliocostalis, the spinalis, and the longissimus muscle that are really long. They, come from, they start from the neck and they go all the way to the sacrum. And furthermore, I consider the uh, deep muscle or posterior to the rectospinal, they are short muscle associated with the spinous and transverse process. And they are like uh, semispinali, multifidute, and rotator. So uh, the back is full of muscle that are not visible because of the big one, latissimus dosis and traps, but you're working on other muscle too. So let's start with the idio, starting from the idiocrats. Uh, we go all the way up. Every time I um, start massaging, I consider the speed of the massage. If you go too fast and deep, you gonna make your client tight. And you don't want that. You want the opposite. You want the, the muscle to be pliable. So, if you go deep, you go slow. So, deep and slow is the way to go. And uh, you can see right now I'm working on the splenius capitis, I'm working on, uh, on a trap. The trap is most of the time tight. You will find that 99% of the client have a tight uh, upper trapezius and it's caused generally by posture, stress and working out. So the first massage pass is to search for tightness in the back and as I say, I start from the Lea crest, I go all the way to the Atlanto occipital joint and down again to the vertebral column, to the opposite iliac crest. Then I try to spread the fascia, following the back functional line. Now you can see I use the elbow, I use the thumb, I use the hands and I try to spread the fascia all the way down, the opposite of the front uh, line. Um, the fascia is, is a really interesting concept. They think it has a tixotropic uh, effect. So the more you move it, the more it becomes pliable. The more you pressure, the more you add uh, uh, structural and uh, mechanical tension, the more you can move it. That's what Ada Rolf was thinking. She was thinking it was a colloid substance. And right now I'm doing a massage to the uh, upper trap and the rotatory cuff. And um, working on a rotatory cuff muscle, they are like infraspinatus, infraspinatus uh, supraspinatus, um, teres minor, and uh, you cannot see like working right now, but uh, the media rotator that is the um, subscapularis. One important factor when I work on the joint of the, um, of the shoulder is the distraction. You want to uh, distract the shoulder joint to increase the range of motion. So with the distraction, especially in this case, your distraction, uh, the humeral head against the glenoid fossa. And then I give a good stretch to uh, reduce the rounded back. Most of the time, uh, people with a tight um, upper trap, they even have a tight uh, uh, pec minor. That's why it's important to stretch. So, um, work on a back line. Uh, try to uh, add some art to your massage, always looking for a new way to use your body. So you can use your thumb, you can use, uh, you can use your elbow. And uh, right now I'm 
try to uh, mobilize, as I say, the glenohumeral joint while I use uh, the thumb as a tool to uh, try to relax uh, the infraspinatus. Another way to work is to open the carpal tunnel, narrow pass, pass, uh, passage in the wrist uh, to avoid the impingement of the median nerve. Okay. The median nerve impingement is caused most of the time by the uh, flexor tendons that swell and they close the, um, the passage. So that's create a carpal tunnel uh, syndrome. Back on the back. And now we start working on the hips and especially the glutes and glute meteors. Uh, when you work on the, on the hips, you want to consider the fact that uh, you're working on a six deep rotator muscle, that all laterally, um, lateral rotator femoral in the hip joint. Uh, the most important are the piriform muscle, gemellio superior in and uh, inferior, obturator internal and externals, and quadratus femoris. Um, right now, I'm trying to release the uh, QL, the QL with a good stretch. Uh, the QL is a muscle that got really tight, most uh, with a, it has a really deep connection with the iliopsoas. If the iliopsoas is weak, the QL can get really tight and vice versa. And the glute medius, the glute medius that is really important, especially for runners, because it stops the adduction of the knee, so it becomes really tight. And especially if you sit all day, and uh, um, it can get really uh, overwork and create uh, piriform syndrome, like, and that's why it's important right now I'm releasing the piriform, and that's why it's important to release the iliopsoas, that is a flexor of the, um, flexor of the hips. And uh, uh, in this position, when you stretch it, you can um, release uh, some back pain and even uh, adjusting a posterior tilt of the hips. So the, um, if you go down uh, in the superficial back line, we're going to start working on the hamstring, the hamstring, um, bicep femoris, semitendinoso, semimembranoso, they are all, uh, flex, they all flex the knee and extend the hips. And uh, they are really easy to injure. They are very prone to injury. Generally, the injury in the hamstring is caused by overtraining and poor flexibility. And even extreme stretching. It's very, uh, it can happen very often that uh, a dancer or acrobat have uh, pulling their uh, hamstring. I met, met a lot of this kind of uh, clients. So it's important to work and uh, pin and stretch and go all the way to the ischial tuberosity that is the origin of this muscle and start stretching the, uh, the quad so that you can work um, tightly on the hamstring. Another muscle that you got really tense is a uh, tensio fascialata. Tensor fascialata can get really tense, especially if you have um, a weak uh, iliopsoas. I found this relation to be really true. And now I'm working on the adductor manius. The adductor manius have, it's a can it's really an interesting muscle because they have some upper fibers that work as an extensor of the hips, and the lower fiber uh, work as an adductor and the flexor of the hips. So. Uh, it's a really, um, really interesting muscle. Again, on the TFL, working in the in, in where the uh, bicep femoris meet the semimembranoso, the semitendinoso. The in, generally in that midpoint is where the pain and where the tear of the hamstring happen. And now working on the soleo, gastroclemio, tibiale posterior, all plantar flexors of the uh, all plantar flexors. And uh, finally, uh, find my way to the flexor of the toes. Sometimes, if you have a glute that is really tight, the flexor 
of the toes are tight. So there is this interconnection between the, the flexor of the toes and the a weak, uh, a weak uh, uh, glutes. Right now I'm showing off with a technique that seems like I'm playing pool, but I'm releasing uh, all the um, superficial back line, especially in the legs. And now back to the stretching on the uh, solar and gastrocnemio, stretching on the piriform, giving some work um, uh, with the thumb uh, on the um, tibial anterior, releasing some and stretching the, the toes, uh, mob mobilize uh, the toes and give it a last uh, paint on the, on, the, on the picture and finishing the massage. That was a really fast one side massage, but that's how it works. So if you like the video guys, subscribe and I will come with this kind of video uh, very often during the week.